Gentlemen. Last Friday night, they got a massive douze point from you guys at home. And in May, they are off to Sweden to see if they can finally put Ireland back on the winner's podium at Eurovision with this song. Folks, would you please welcome Bambi Thug! <laughs> well, let's get so that in there. Down. There we go. How are we getting that sorted? Yeah, good, thank Lovely. you. Lovely. First Might of all, can I say you are looking sensationale. What thank do we think you. of the outfit, folks? There we go. Uh, a week ago, we were here. I was calling out your name. It's been a crazy week, I'm assuming. It has been a mental week, a very exciting week, a very overwhelming week, but a very, very beautiful, very beautiful week. Uh, what's the highlight been uh, of the last seven days? I guess just the absolute love that I've gotten from from the country and um, just my, I guess, everyone discovering my, my Doomsday Blues song and also my old catalogue and just going crazy over it and uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful and you've made some famous friends along the way. You've got a few famous followers now. Yeah. Um, uh, Seema uh, shouted us out, and so did um, Johnny Logan and, um, and... And Dustin. And Dustin, Dustin. That, that's always Dustin. good luck for a Eurovision, <laughs> a Eurovision entry. Yeah, Dustin, which is nice, because I was on uh, Dustin's Daily News when I was uh, 12. OK. <laughs> I am feeling <laughs> very, very old right now. Uh, we got to talk about the Eurovision itself. Yes. 162 million people last year. Yeah tuned in. Are you ready to bring the song to the bigger audience? 100%. I can't wait. I want that big stage, you know, like I, it's something I've always dreamed about, getting my, um, my visions um, seen by, I guess, the world and what a better place to realise them than the Eurovision stage. Than, yeah! than the Eurovision <laughs> stage. Uh, I know you got, uh, where's your sis? Your sis is in tonight. Where? There you go, and your friend Maeve, yes. there you go. Newly uh, qualified architect, Holly. There you go. Lots of big news in our house this week. Gorgeous. Do you do anything for cash? No? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a, I'm putting an extension on at the minute. Sorry about that. Uh, but of course, you, yeah, you got your sister in. There was yeah. music growing up in the house that was surrounded by music. Surrounded by music. Um, we always used to, we would rewrite musicals um, and annoy our, my mum by putting on elaborate shows. I was always made to be the bouncer or the, the man and they would stuff me, make me really fat. Um, and yeah, we rewrote um, Food Glorious Food to be Shoes Glorious Shoes, um, which is one of my favourites. Um, but uh, in the house, we would have lyric in the morning, there'd be rap, there was rock, there was musicals, there was jazz, there was everything. So it kind of makes sense why my music is so, uh, I guess, just a big smush of everything. Uh, this is this is you oh in, my God, your, that's me in, in the school. early years, getting the groove <laughs> on there. Uh, when when did you discover your sound? Because I know a lot of your music uh, reflects, you know, some of the uh, some of the more difficult stuff that you've had to go through in your life. Yeah, um, do you know it's been a, I've been a songwriter in the industry for a long time, um, about six or seven years, and I've done multiple genres. Um, I've done a lot of dance music. I've done uh, write for some rock artists, and I was uh, kind of um, doing a bit more bubblegum pop and a bit folky, and then. It just wasn't for me, and I, I started working with um, my producer Tyler Ryder, and I, I was kind of, uh, I was at a, a crossroads, and I was like, I just want to make weird witchy music. I want to be me, and he was just like, let's just go. So I just started to play with him, and uh, it, it, 
culminated in Bambi Thug and uh, music is how I, um, I guess, navigate my own mind, what's happened to me and the world and... Uh, and some of the stuff that's happened to you, you know, has, has been tough. Yes, very much so. Um, very much. Uh... You, you shared a wee bit of that on social media this week. I did. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, I have been a, yes, a, a victim of uh, sexual assault a few times in my life. Um, but what I will say is it is part of my story, but it's not my story. And I just, um, I think when you have a platform, it's important, not that everyone needs to speak about it because obviously it's very difficult, but if I can show solidarity um, to help anyone um, see that they're not alone in that, then I would, I would always be that support. And for someone like you to come out and talk about that makes other people feel stronger. How does it feel for you now to have so many people in your corner, you've got your family, your friends, and the whole of Ireland rooting for you. It feels incredible. It feels incredible, you know. I actually, I said to my sister, uh, before the whole Euro song, I was like, no one in Ireland knows who I am. I need to like get some Irish fans. I need some Irish support. And now the whole country is behind me, and it's, it's, it feels like a homecoming to me. Um, and I'm just super grateful, and my heart is super full, and, yeah, thank you so much for voting for me. <laughs> now, in life, there are, you know, people who support you and then there's other people who maybe don't get your look or don't get your music. And there's been a few of those this week as well. What would you say to those people? Um, I would say, Mary Murphy, with your petition, I send you lots of love and light. And well, what's, what, what's, that, what's that petition? <laughs> there was a petition to get me off Eurosong because I'm apparently a Satanist. Um, okay. Because I like to dress up for stage and because I wear a lot of black and because I, um, I guess I'm, I pioneer our, our, our ancient Ireland. You know, it's a pagan, it, pa we're a pagan country before anything. And... Um, I, I just, I find it fascinating, our, our history, and um, I love, I love the aesthetics of witchcraft. I, I love the, I love the, the essence, I love the message of it, you know, it's, it's, it's your own religion, it's a personal um, freedom, and I'm sorry that it upsets you. That's why I came out with not the white face on or anything today, to show you that I'm, I'm just a, a person. <laughs> I've just noticed that that's not a clutch bag that you've got, that's a... Uh... That, that's a little, that's a little rat. There we go. This is actually. There that, we go. That, that is going to scare the bejesus out of Mary Keelty <laughs> sitting in Dundrum tonight. Patrick, was that a real rat you had on there? That was a gift actually from Vilma here um, during Eurosong. I was outside and she just was like, "You need this." You do I was need like, this. I do need this. You do need this to complete the dark look. I mean, where there's the, there's dark, there's light. There's light. There's the shade. Uh, an unsurprising, or sorry, a surprising musical influence uh, that people may not know. For you, Air, are these guys. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. How many times have you seen the, uh, the High Priests of Pop? Five. They were five my first them. five concerts. I really wanted to marry Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shane Fat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a long way from, from rock and roll kids to, you know, sending this song to yeah. Eurovision. What does it mean for an artist like you to be representing Ireland on the big stage? Um, it means everything to me, um, especially as a queer artist. Um, I mean, my whole, my song is about being excluded and being ignored and having your potential overlooked and as a queer person, that is something that happens all the time, especially if you're a queer person with a vagina, um, even more so. And uh, it, it just, it's sparking a lot of, uh, it's just, it's bringing it home to like myself as a kid, you know, um, my dreams just like suddenly 
coming into fruition and, and I think, you know, queer people do need, need a voice and I'm so, um, so grateful to be able to be a voice for us and for the alt community in Ireland because alt music is on the rise. Um, <laughs> you know, you're talking there about, you know, queer people needing a voice. You know, Ireland needs a voice and we are absolutely delighted that you're our voice and you are going to Eurovision to represent us. How, how is the prep going? Um, yeah, we had a, a meeting today uh, here before this and it's getting very real. It's a very fast turnaround. There's lots of things to, to organise, but um, I'm super excited and I'm ready and uh, I'm going to work, work extremely hard. Probably not sleep a lot. Okay, will, will the rap be making an appearance? Um, maybe, might hide him somewhere. Okay. Uh, well, look, on behalf of us all, we uh, wish you the best of luck. I know that 2023 might have been the year of Barbie. I think 2024 could be the year of Bambi. Uh, <laughs> come back. <laughs> and see us. I will, of course. I'd love to. Has to be the first stop whenever you win. Come of back course. and see us. Uh, we're delighted to welcome you back on the show. Uh, give it up one more time for Bambi Thug. Thank you.